careful, I think, with sort of mixing the two, the two together, you know, keeping what we're doing here separating them than what we're doing. And I, yeah, I, I like, I, I read the web page too. There's a lot I, I, you know, it's, I think it's kind of ugly. You know, uh, some of the comments there, the remarks, and some of the stuff I read is pretty bad. But, hey, a lot of the stuff there I like and it's informative too. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, I think we can separate those and hopefully maybe the web guys that are doing it can kind of straighten a lot of the stuff out a little bit because it, it is probably it is something I think we can all support generally. You know? So, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Mr. Pacheco? There's a saying that says for every adversity, there's an equal or greater benefit. We just have to look for it. Now, I've seen the website. Now, I do consider myself living in Rose Hill. I choose to say that, and I'm free to say that. And if anybody wants to correct me, try it. I like Yoli's spirit. I, I, I like the way she gets involved. She's in the, she comes to our standing rules committee meeting. I've seen her in all different kinds of places. I welcome the challenge. I welcome, this is the things that make us grow. And I, I think that Yoli and her husband really do care about El Sereno, whatever that term might be. You know, I've been living here since 1967. Some people might say, well, wait, you, know, you don't belong here. Yeah. Except for two years that we lived in Alhambra. Oh. My wife and I, except two years, right after we got married. We've been living in this community since then. I've had so many people, including yourself, question whether or not I, I belong here. It's sad. It's not I, a matter of belonging. It's a matter of representing the area where you live. Mr. Santiago, Mr. Pacheco has... Well, the thing is, I graduated from Wilson. I went to Cal State LA. I was chairman of La Raza. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But I think what's, what's important is, is that I see Yoli involved. And that's beautiful. And I'm very happy to be with us. Thank you. Mr. Santiago? That's right. I would like to say that, you know, uh, Yoli has the spirit that many of us on this board sometimes don't have to, um, to get involved and to take issues and to take um, sort of like the spin that needs to be given to something that they believe in. You know, there's a lot of us who say one thing and do something else. So I think that for Yoli, that's not the case. You know, she actually has the spirit and, and believes in what she does. and so. I am wholeheartedly saying yes on her vote. I, I totally agree as well. I, I've actually had, had the opportunity to work with Yoli in many uh, committees. She's very active, very involved, one of the board members, one of the stakeholders who's more involved than I would say some board members. Um, we've been to hearings together. Um, so I definitely think it's time that you're on this board. <laughs> I, I think Yolanda brings a valid uh, aspect to the community. I think she would be a great board member. Uh, I want to agree with Mr. Pacheco, Mr. Johnson, Mr. McGuire, though, and that the board members and directors understand that there is a website that is, is promotes negative representations of the community. They do, they do target specific communities. They do target the fire department. I've read that they're against the council member's position. They say it doesn't do enough. So the whole idea is to be fair and inclusive because serving LA 32 neighborhood council is much different than serving Alice Serena. They're two way different things. And I think some people bring it up and I, I respect your decisions on everyone's board member, but we need people who will represent the community, be fair and, and impartial because we're all LA 32 neighborhood council, like the gentleman mentioned, and like the you mentioned too, Mr. Board, we're all Los Angeles. So if they're going to be on the board, they have to truly represent all of LA 32 neighborhood council, which is four communities. And if we realize that they don't represent that, and they're either biased or don't have the same values of the inclusiveness of LA 32 neighborhood council, then the board, I'm sure, will find ways to release them or, or find other means to, to allow them to be more inclusive. So I would hope that if they do become a board member, which you probably will be uh, seated today, this evening, that there is a strong disconnection between LA 32 neighborhood council the Austin Historical <coughs> Society, because as a board member, we can't, you know, as, as a board member, she cannot bring her values of the Historical Society to LA 32. She could present them at a meeting, put them on the agenda, but those values cannot be the same. That's what I'm saying. You have to be fair. And you know that, that there are the conflict of interest in the, the and, 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 and I'd like to make
make sure that they correct some of the material they've done by changing some of our LA32 neighborhood council yes. uh, yeah, yeah. materials. That's, that's not, we're not talking about that. We are talking about that. Is there anything you would like to say? Yes, of course. So you're always have something to say. I'm the quietest one, but I always have something to say when I speak. Um, on behalf of Yoli, I have seen Yoli in all of the meetings. I have worked with her and her children, her husband, her family is very close-knit, like I think that we shall all be soon. Um, I know that all of her values are based on truth. I've worked with her, I've been to events with her. I asked her when we first opened the board seats if she would run with us, and her comment to me was, no, I like it back here. And I said, no, but we need someone like you. We really do. And I, I, meant, I made very clear to her that I wanted her on the board a long time ago. So you have come, you have flourished, and now you're going to fruition. So let's, let's do this. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks for who? Thank you. Uh, that's another word for excelling and good. Uh, kudos, I think, something like that. Kudos to, kudos to, to you. Uh, what all we're going to say, what Spin said, is pretty unanimous, okay? <clears throat> I heard here tonight someone uh, criticized for whatever you had regarding the El Sereno Society or whatever, what something negative that was put there. Someone here mentioned something to that effect, which they had every right to say. But I'd like to say that person also said something about Ed Ray that was very Can unkind. Can we focus on... I am. It's all that. part of what I'm telling her. You know, just okay. like uh, Mr. Montana <laughs> mentioned that we have a page that's negative, it's called uh, Sam Jordy, okay? And everybody can write and do things like that. Sam Jordy, okay? Yes, Mayor Sam. Mayor Sam. Sam. See how some people know? Correct. <laughs> Thank you. So you all know what I'm talking about. Right. And yet that, that was mentioned today about the her society, okay? Her El Sereno. And yet that person had the guts to say that. that when that person called our uh, councilman, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Is that? Okay. Would you like to ask her a question? Yes. Uh, uh, I, I, you probably won't be able to make a comment on what I'm going to ask you, but it's really most unfortunate that you probably think it, well, it's been said about you. We cannot say that about Mr. Jose Aguilar. Okay. I'm sorry. That's not yes, yes, I can. Okay. I asked her that question. That you can probably can't answer it. Cannot. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, would you like to? Um, Uh, <laughs> all right, so Yoli, I, I really respect that Yoli's discipline. Um, I think we need people that are really care about the community. Um, I like that she has a that she has an education and is disciplined and and, and, and works really hard at trying to figure out. How to better the community. Um, I don't necessarily agree with everything, but like with everyone, I mean, I don't think we all agree with 100% with our, our families or our closest um, friends or circles, you know. But you know, I think we choose to get uh, to to remain together in order to move forward. Um, I think we need someone like Yoli on the board. She puts a lot of us to shame, or I'll say she puts me to shame. She's so see, she's so involved in the community that she, you know, makes me look bad all the time because I have a very limited of what I can do in the community. Um, well, within within my position as a board member, but you know, um, I wish her. I hope she. She's not my vote. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. I would just um, like to make a comment, not necessarily about Ms. Garcia, but it, it seems as if the, the real, the crux of the argument is that you're affiliated with an outside, um, an outside news, newspaper or website, and um, and according to to your rules, according to the bylaws, it's supposed to be an inclusive space. It doesn't mention anything about censoring people because they have a different political view. Actually, it says on um, your policy is to prohibit discrimination against people lasting for their political affiliation. Um, yeah, affiliation. And if she's, or if she's involved with a group that has a different political affiliation, 
um, to just exclude her on that basis really seems discriminatory. And of course, if, if we're a, trying to be an inclusive group, we shouldn't involve in censoring of anyone with um, disparate opinions. Thank you. Excellent. Mr. Yeah, um, I don't really know you. Um, we met, I think, once before, at least we're addressed at City Hall for the name changes of Davis Hill. Um, I just asked, I mean, my family has been there since 1903, and everyone's opinion is fine, but on the greater scope, I just uh, hope we all um, can look at the larger picture of this council and put principles before our own personalities because in the long run, we're actually hurting those that we're trying to defend and protect and help and love. So we kind of get miscued on the way and I, I think you have a, all our intentions are, are true. You know, even this nation's intentions were true, but at some point it could get twisted. And um, I believe your perspective is great, as long as it's for the greater good. Because for me, it's about moral and principle. It doesn't matter, divisions, districts, we all represent Los Angeles, and not only represent Los Angeles, we represent a nation under God, which is goodness. And that's all I, I expect from all of us. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. I want to thank Yoli and her family for doing the hand painted signs for the Kite Festival. And they weren't even, she wasn't even on the board. And I welcome her to be on the board, or her nomination to be on the board, because I know she's going to challenge everyone to get more involved. Thank you. Mr. Aguilar. Yoli, I'm glad you get the same building that I got. <laughs> <laughs> you answered the question for Yeah, but the thing is, Yoli, but I, I do disagree with your position concerning the development down there, because I was part of Pew's board. I don't know what the development is on. Uh, the one on, on, right here on the bar, next, next to the elementary way. school over there. Yeah. And, and I'm, there was some personal attacks made, but see, here's the thing. When I first got involved with the board, Yoli, I was on the other side of an issue. LA32 took a position to defend and support Weezer and the Hillside Ordinance, and we were on the opposition. <coughs> we fought hard, and that's what motivated me to get me on the board. Now that you're going to be on the board, you're going to have a say on what, what happens as far as land use decisions or recommendations to the councilman, which is very important. So as far as criticizing us, you're going to become us. So I don't know if you can still go on and criticize us. You know, if you're part of the board, you're part of the dialect, and that's what I welcome you. Because we don't have to agree on things. Like Reels is a personal friend of mine. I respect him. I've disagreed with him in the past on some, uh, you know, Hillside ordinance issues, which I kind of forgot what it was. I think it was redevelopment issues that he was for and I was against. But the thing is, he's always been involved, and that's why I respect the man because he's been involved. He might, you know, Mr. Edgar, we all can we focus on her and not okay, well, well, the attacks from the organization to Mr. But we're Edgar. not talking about the organization, we're talking about Mr. Oh, yeah, well, and yeah, you, you only, so here's the thing. So you're going to be part of this group, and um, you're going to, whatever we decide, you're going to be you be part of that critique, okay, which is good. So I welcome you to the group, even though I have some, we may have some disagreements, I do welcome you to this group. And, and trust me, you will be critiqued like, like I was critiqued. We all have luggage, and you got yours. But it's, it's, about, it's about the dialectic, and I believe in the process and developing the dialectic, you know. And I'm glad you're not a complainer, because I, when people complain to me, um, I really, I kind of, I kind of, I hate complainers. I like people that take I'm the initiative. I'm thoughtful of the vote. Yes, I agree. And there are all those people that take the initiative. Thank you, Mr. Regular. So, okay. Quick. Uh, well, they call for the vote. Call for the vote. Yeah, I call for the vote. We first have the vote. We have the vote to vote. Yeah. So does everybody, uh, who second the motion to call for the vote? Second. Okay, Mr. Contagious, can we vote to call for the vote? Can we go ahead and take the vote, Mr. Johnson? Let me. All in favor of. Yoli Garcia. No, no we got a call for the vote first. Call for, oh, vote. call for a vote. All in favor of voting now. For voting, right. Mr. Warner, anyone else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Abstention? Mr. Ensemble, did you vote? Mr. Ensemble, did you vote? Yeah, yeah. Mr. McGuire, you vote? For yeah, a vote? He voted. Yeah, he voted. Okay, okay. unanimous. Okay, so now we're going to vote. Two. So it's 1300. Uh, now it's 5, 10, 16, 0. Oh, so sorry. Okay, I yeah, we're drawing. Okay. So let's go ahead and call for the vote. Two okay. Vote, 
is Yoli Garcia on okay, to as you. the this is what area, correct? West Area Representative Director. Okay, okay that will be replacing Brenda Morales. Okay. All in favor of Yoli Garcia as a replacement for West Region Director Brenda Morales signify by raising your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? One, two, three. Okay, 1303. Welcome aboard. No, I have 1303. I'm going to say. How about recount? How about recount? No, I, I counted right. It's 1303. 13, yes. 0, 3. Okay. 0, 3. Okay. Congratulations, Yoli. Thank you for checking home. I'm going to send them myself. Oh, okay. So, um, we are going to be actually over our time limit yeah. in terms of our agenda for Mr. Brownack. So, Someone like to make a motion to continue the meeting to. I'm going to extend the meeting. Well, I don't think there's any controversy on the next one, but I mean, there I might move, be. Some I move the motion. Give me a second. Wait, I got it. I would say 10, 20 minutes. No, I mean, I, I, I did. 30, 30 minutes. I made the move for whatever required time it is to start attending. I okay. say the same. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Uh, Yoli, come on down. Come on down. Come on. What order do you want? Okay. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, to move forward on our agenda. Yes. Uh, uh, uh,
guess I'm questioning whether there is a, the city does it one way, and if they have it within their own rules to be able to do this, but is this within Robert's Rules of Order, which is supposed to be the way we run our rules? So I'm just asking for clarification. Yes. That's all. Just, just clarify it for me. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Okay, just a point of information here. In the past, we have set precedents on this board of blanket yeah. set voting, and so and none of those issues have been challenged. So I mean, I recommend Mr. Manzano just free to so take the language, right. but we had had a prior process. But it's not correct. And I may have been absent. No, you were there. Okay, okay. okay let's listen, guys. No. Okay, we found it. So it is the consent agenda or in some cases the consent calendar allows members to adopt a group of items in block without discussion. This is a good way to dispose of business that is non-controversial, for example, approval of minutes, paying the bills, the customary donations. The consent agenda may be presented to the members at any time during the meeting. It is a list of items that can be disposed of in block with single vote without discussion. Every member should have a printed copy of the consent agenda when the presiding officer presents it. When presenting it, the chair asks if any member wants to extract an item from the consent agenda. Okay, so would we like to move forward then on the three items and take a vote? Either we vote. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, it says, now let me, get, let me understand this. It says any member can ask for an item to be taken yes. out of the calendar. Yes. But that member doesn't necessarily need neither have to agree or disagree. All you can say is, you know what, I don't want any of these items to go that way. That could be the case. That's the what I want. Okay, then I guess the calendar that won't function okay. this way because well, we have I would think in this situation then you have two duty motions. I don't know. According to the way Anthony read it, it does sound that if any if anybody has an objection, we can't do it that way. Okay. Everybody has to agree. So let's go ahead and move forward on the first one then. Three, three. So the community so impact no, statement for the DWP contract. Um, here it is. Everybody has a draft motion on this. And basically it's the LA 32 neighborhood council and community impact statement. Council file 131004. The date will be changed, obviously, to October 10, 2013. Community impact statement. Department of Water Power International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers proposed contract. Summary. The LA 32 expresses its support or rejects the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power DWP contract proposal currently before City Council. This contract, once approved, will have an impact on rate payers as well as on the financial sustainability of the DWP. Council file 131004 request an analysis from the Chief Legislative Analyst and the Office of Public Accountability of the most recently proposed contract between DWP and IEDW, with particular focus on the impact of the proposal on the rate payers, as well as its impact on the financial sustainability of the DWP as a utility enterprise. So the full comment as a board, we find that there is clearly, or we find that there is, so we either we support or reject it, among rate payers in having a utility that is efficient, cost competitive, and transparent in its operation. It is incumbent upon the council to pursue those goals and ensure that the Department of Water and Power is on a financially sound footing to pursue its mission and meet state and federal mandates. The LA 32 Neighborhood Council hereby demands that the City Council support Mayor Eric Garcetti's tentative agreement on the proposed contract with the Department of Water and Power, DWP, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IPW, to A, freeze wage increases, reduce costs by restructuring pension obligations for new hires, reconsider health care contributions of union members and salary rates of new employees, change outdated work rules that drive up cost to rate payers. So, at its October 10, 2013 meeting, a Brown Act Notice public meeting was held by the LA 32 Neighborhood Council with a quorum of 16 board members present and it was on, is it 16? Um, to be 17, I have a Mr. 17, sorry. 17 board members present and that by a vote of, and that's where we take our vote. 
uh, blank yes, blank no, and blank abstentions. The LA 13 Neighborhood Council adopts or does not adopt the community <coughs> impact statement on the Department of Water and Power International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers proposed contract. That is the community impact statement that the LA 32 would submit to the City of Los Angeles City Council for file number 131004. Was the motion made to put this? Is there a motion? No, this is why the, uh, the proposed. Yeah. It's a community it's impact statement. No, I know. But oh, yes, this was actually brought up at an executive committee. It was voted to be on the agenda. It's been on the agenda. It's been on the agenda for three months. Two, three months. We have to make a motion. Okay, so we have to second it. We right? have to do. We have to make a motion and then second it. And the motion just says to accept or reject. Exactly. Accept. So I, I'm not making the motion. Okay. Would so anyone to like to make, make a motion, motion to accept? Accept. I'll Mr. second. Accept. Mr. Johnson, second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. We're not opening. Are there any public comments so that you would like to talk on this? Okay. So let's go ahead and open it up to board. Mr. Johnson. Small correction. Mayor Eric Arson. Okay. <laughs> E R I C page. Oh, it's E R E R I C. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Yeah, I served on the DWP committee when it was first founded for a few years, and I'm gonna tell how basically it operates. It's a quid pro quo. What happens is they ask for a six percent increase in wages and salaries and whatever else benefits that they ask for. And in return, the city of LA gets a two to three hundred million dollar rate transfer from DWP into the city's general fund. And that had that racket has been going on going on since I can remember, going on maybe a, a good six or six or eight years it's been going on. We've been seeing these rate transfers happen and these rate transfers coincide with the six percent uh, increases in, in, in rates. Now, to me, um, that's a taxation that's outside. If you want to raise a tax, if you raise taxes, that takes a vote of the public, of the general population to do so. And this is a backdoor stop as to raising funds through our utility rates. The problem with this is that our businesses are in decline. Uh, they don't have any special exemptions. Like if you're on the poverty level, you, you get your electric bill subsidized, but if you're not on the poverty level, everybody else has to pay these gross increases in rates. Um, the other issue that I have is that the D the DWP, the Indian Employees Union, has developed slush funds. Okay? And there's two nonprofits that it, that are in question that they can't account with uh, I don't know, was it three million dollars that they, they can't account for as to how they spent their resources on? So we also have the issue with the, the, the union is using our, our rates to have their slush funds to go out and take trips and party and do whatever else they're doing that they can't account for. Now, if we had the accounting, we could understand if it was justified or not, but they, well, they're, not account, they're not accountable. Okay. So my, my issue is, is I would support Mr. Garcetti because he's trying to control this. He's also mm -hmm. trying to give our economy a break. Because the higher the electrical costs, the more we have to pay in food and, and utilities, the less money you have in, dis in this disposable income. So I, I urge the board to support Mr. Garcetti in his efforts to curtail some of the union embellishments that they've been, and they've been doing on, on the backs of the ratepayers. Because I, I can't afford it no longer. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Mr. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. Can we go around? Come on. Mr. Chavez. Okay, uh, there's a lot of validity to what uh, Jose is saying, <clears throat> but you know that standard procedure, the water power generates millions of dollars. If it wasn't for those things that he's mentioning, they, they and other companies like that, other cities, uh, would be doing the same thing, okay? Since the water power is a department of the city of Los Angeles, the city of LA owns that. Uh, not like Edison works in a lot of cities that are not, don't have their own power system, okay? Uh, I think it's, it's just a controversy just because it's water and power and the, what he said, uh, what was mentioned about parties and all that. That's something that goes on no matter where and all the levels of higher echelon. Uh, Mr. Management. Did you support or not? The well, I, I'll reflect that when the, the okay, vote's called. Okay, anybody else? 
you know, sometimes in, in reading these things, you kind of want to read in between the lines. And so what I'm reading here is that Eric Garcetti wants to go after this unit. That's what we're talking about. And kind of blaming them for the increase in our rates. And, and we have seen that over, and we've been reading the Times that he's, he's upset because they didn't support his election. This is payback. Now, do we want to be used that way, or do we want to say maybe, in a different kind of statement, that we support Eric Garcetti in finding out all the reasons, all the reasons, not just blame this one particular union that didn't support him, as to why we're getting the rate increases when the, 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 the uh, production of electricity is getting more and more efficient. So you've got to be careful. We're, gonna, we're, gonna be, we're being used with this thing to go after a union. Is that what we want? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Pacheco. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Daniel. I mean, uh, in fact, this is, I think, you need to go uh, after, after what the unions are doing. I mean, but we also need to hold his hand to the fire, hold our council to the fire. Yeah, you're right. They are the largest uh, municipal electrical, I think, utility in the country, I mean, where the city actually owns it, as Mr. Chalk used to say. And yeah, I think we, you know, don't just say, yeah, I, we really support you here. I know you, they, you weren't, guys weren't friends from, during the election. I think that's actually a, kind of a positive thing. At least he doesn't have any, you know, he doesn't have to feel that he has to pay them back, you know, so he can be a little bit more objective. So I support it. But yeah, we need to hold his, his hand in the fire and say, we need to uncover everything here. And not just, uh, you know, just, well, we're going to point our finger at you. Everybody else gets to kind of slide by. We need to hold a council who votes for this stuff too accountable. They voted for those increases some years back that were just exorbitant. That's the type of stuff that we really need to hold. I support it. I, I, 